Welcome to the homework for lesson 21. This is module 7 of grade 3. Get your name on here first, please. And Margot finds as many rectangles as she can with a perimeter of 14 centimeters. That's a perimeter, not an area. Perimeter of 14 centimeters. Shade Margot's rectangles on the grid below. Label the length and width of each rectangle. So I'm going to use blue and one of the things we figured out in the last homework assignment was that if you want a rectangle to add up to say 14 centimeter perimeter you need the length and the width to add up to half of the perimeter so that 14, the length and the width have to add up to 7. So we're looking for really ways to make 7 because you could have, a, you know, if you had a 2 and a, a 2 by 5, so there's 7. 5 and 2. So see, here's, like here's 2 5s is 10, and that's 4, it's 14 because these two numbers are always going to be the same as these two numbers because of opposite sides of a rectangle. So we're looking for add end pairs that add up to 7 for our sides for our rectangle. So we could have, there's one of them right there, 2 by 5. And then uh, one, 1 by 6 will also work, because that adds up to 7. You can't have 0 by 7, because you can't have a side length of 0. So that's 1, 2, and you could have a 3 by 4. And that's it. So, yeah, because we already have the 5 by 2, right? So, label the length and width of each rectangle. These are centimeters, right? So, this is 2 centimeters by 5 centimeters and 1 centimeter by 6 centimeters. And this is 4 centimeters by three centimeters. Find the areas of the rectangles in part A above. We could label these, uh, but I could say, what do we have? Two by five, one by six, Be careful with this because we're going back and forth from centimeters to square centimeters, but be careful about it because we're talking about length and width. Those are in regular linear units, centimeters, but area has to be in square centimeters. And then the one by six. The perimeters of the rectangles are the same. What do you notice about the areas? Well, it seems to me like the, uh, what do you notice about the areas? It looks like the farther apart the numbers are, 
right? Because one and six, they're like five apart. And then two and five, those are three apart. Let me just kind of make a note of that. So these are five apart. These are three apart. And these three by four, those three and four are only one apart. So the side lengths, the f it looks like the farther apart they are, the smaller the area is. Right, because that's six. This one's in the middle, and this one is they're really close, and that's the largest area. So we're gonna find a way to say that. Now maybe you notice something different. That's fine. Write down whatever you saw. If you didn't see the same thing as me, it's okay. As long as you can describe it, whatever you noticed, really, you should go with what you saw and not just what I say. So um, that's just what I noticed, so that's what I'm writing down. The perimeters of the rectangle. Okay, so I noticed it, and I have to figure out a way to say this now. So how did I just say it? Um, I mean, if all you notice was that the areas are all different, that's fine. Write that down. Um, the closer the length is to the width. The greater the area. Makes me think of that last question in the Lesson 20 homework. Because there was a difference between a square, the area of a square and a rectangle, or a rectangle that's not a square with the same perimeter. Tanner uses unit squares to build rectangles that have a perimeter of 18 units. He creates the chart below to record his findings. Complete his chart. You might not use all the spaces in the chart. So perimeters of 18. So the one that he made was. And I'm drawing pictures of it because that's what I have to do to think about it. He used that. So you need lengths and widths that add up to 9, right? Because it's 18, half of 18 is 9. So he's going to need 8 and 1. And he's going to need... Two and seven and three by six, and he could have four by five, and that's as close as you can get to a square because they're only one apart. So, do you see what I did? I just counted down from eight. The long side I counted down from eight seven six five that's kind of how I stayed organized about it uh, the number of rectangles so we have one two two units and then I had three by six And then I had four by five. And then the number of rectangles I made um, counting the one that uh, that Tanner already had, one, two, three, four of those. And what's the area? Uh, the 2 by 7 is an area of 14, because it's 2 times 7 square units. This is 6 times 3, so it's 18 square units. 
and 4 times 5 is 20 square units. So this is Fourteen and twenty explain how you found the widths and lengths in the chart above so I just need to write down what did I do I looked for uh, length and width to add up to nine that's that's it Jason and Dina both draw rectangles with perimeters of 12 centimeters but their rectangles have different areas explain with words pictures and numbers how this is how this is possible we just need an example and then a picture of it will be our explanation a labeled picture and a sentence that's all we need here so Jason uh, let's just make one up right it doesn't tell us what they are so we have to make them up Jason we need a perimeter of 12 so that means the sides have to add up the length and width have to add up to 6 so we could have uh, 2 by 4 and then Dina could have one that's, she could have a square. Jason's. Um, rectangle an area of eight square centimeters and underneath here's what I'm going to do too and I'm sure if you've practiced your facts at all this year and you must have you probably know these facts pretty well um, but in, even if you don't you still write them down show that's how you figured out what the area was uh, it's not a lot of writing so write it down Jason's rectangle has an area of eight square centimeters and Dina's area of nine square centimeters and that's all you need for an example